The carrier was originally designed in 1935 and has been modified and adapted until today there are numerous types of this unique fighting vehicle on practically every front of the present war. It's aptly named a universal carrier and is in point of fact one of the Army's maids of all work. Although this fighting unit is among the smallest of the Army's vehicles, it is in performance a veritable giant. Bulletproof steel protects the crew and vital mechanical parts and a powerful engine plus a very good power to weight ratio gives an excellent performance. The suspension, which allows rough ground to be negotiated, evenly distributes the load and is extremely flexible. It's driven by an endless track carried on four bogey assemblies, two on each side. For road driving, two headlights, a tail light and a convoy light with changeover switch are provided. For general utility, it has no equal. Briefly, the carrier can be divided into five assemblies. First, the hull, which is made of bulletproof steel and is divided into two separate compartments by a division plate. The complete assembly forms a rigid box construction, which is the foundation of the vehicle. The power unit, comprising the engine and gearbox, is carried on a three-point suspension and is situated low down in the rear compartment, thus helping stability by creating a low center of gravity. The rear axle carrying the main drive is bolted to the side and rear plates of the hull. Power is transmitted from the gearbox to the rear axle differential through a universal coupling. The vehicle is controlled by means of a steering wheel which operates on the brakes and the forward bogey assemblies. The suspension system is mounted on the lower half of the outside of the hull and runs the full length of the vehicle the whole forming an excellently sprung, yet very stable construction. The front compartment, which extends the full width of the vehicle, has accommodation for the driver and a gunner. The driver's position is on the right-hand side, as in an ordinary British motor car. He is provided with a seat, which is operated by a hand lever. Vision forward is by means of an aperture in the front plate. This window is protected by a safety glass screen incorporated in a steel shutter. Immediately in front of this is a sighting vane which enables the driver to bring the vehicle onto the target, while a conveniently placed driving mirror permits observation to the rear. Grouped in front of the driver are the controls, which are similar to those on an ordinary car, with the clutch on the left, the foot brake in the center, and the accelerator on the right. A handbrake lever is placed centrally between the driver's legs. The change speed lever and gate, which allows four speeds forward and one in reverse, is in a position convenient to the driver's left hand. A car-type steering wheel is mounted on the hull plate in front of the driver. This operates on the front bogey assemblies and also on the track brakes. Here is a model which shows how this unique mechanism works. At the base of the steering column and fixed to it, is a plate with three projections. Two of these projections are connected by rods to a cam mounted on the hull bottom plate. The third projection is connected by links direct to the brakes on the rear axle. Movement of the steering wheel first turns the cam which moves the cross tube and bogies to the right or left and bows the tracks enough for slight turns. Continued turning of the steering wheel brings into operation the third projection on the plate and through its linkage system applies the brake on one of the tracks, thereby slowing down or stopping it completely for rapid turns. Coming back to the driver's compartment, an instrument panel is mounted on the right of the hull front plate. It includes a festoon lamp, speedometer, oil pressure gauge and radiator temperature gauge. It also includes the starter button, ammeter, lighting and ignition switches and a socket for an inspection lamp. The lighting circuit fuses are mounted behind the instrument panel 
and fuse wire is inserted between the terminals of the clips. On the base of the clip is wound a supply of fuse wire for any necessary replacement. The control lever for the starting carburetor is to be found on the right side of the driver's seat. Also on the right side of the driver are mounted a fire extinguisher, a box for hand grenades and two bins for ammunition. On the driver's left in the front compartment is the adjustable seat for the gunner. The front of the vehicle is built so as to allow room for operating a gun and has an observation aperture on each side. The Bren gun is carried in the ready position on the right, while on the left front there's a support for a boy's rifle. On the gunner's left there's a fire extinguisher, spare magazine case and two ammunition bins. Under the front plate is a shelf for the vehicle documents and on the floor is the tool locker. Behind the driver and gunner, separated by a division plate, is a compartment in which the engine is housed and accommodation is provided for the rest of the crew. In the centre and dividing the compartment in two is the covering protecting the engine. On the top of this is the cover plate for the radiator filler, a Bren anti-aircraft mounting stem, locker for Bren spare barrel, fire extinguisher and wireless anti-interference screen. On the back plate of the right-hand compartment is a signal pistol, while on the shelf is a bin for wireless valves, mortar bomb bin, ammunition bins, and Bren gun spares wallet. On the division plate is a box for hand grenades. On the engine covers is a holder for the Bren gun or rifle, and also a box for signal cartridges. In between this shelf and the engine cover, is a seat with a 10-gallon petrol tank and the junior compressor underneath. In the front of a similar recess on the other side of the engine is a box for hand grenades, holders for rifles and Bren gun, while on the floor is the battery and Bren tripod socket. Along the side of this recess is a kit locker, at the end of which is a box for smoke generators. On the rear plate is a boy's gun support, while on the floor is a second 10-gallon fuel tank, on top of which is a tray for a portable cooker. Carried on the rear are the waterproof cover and camouflage net, a lifting jack, jack handle and starting handle. Oil and petrol cans are carried on the rear of the wireless battery box, and a ration box is on the right. On the rear plate are carried a tow rope, shovel, pickaxe and crowbar. On the right side of the hull are the mountings for the wireless aerial and smoke generator discharger, while carried on the front is the track adjusting tool. Now let's look at the mechanical aspect. Under easily removed covers in the rear compartment is the engine. This is a 30 horsepower Ford V8. It has two banks of four cylinders set at an angle of 90 degrees and develop 73 brake horsepower at 3,500 revolutions per minute. This engine is very simple in design and has a very good power to weight ratio. A starting motor with a pinion drive and operated by a six volt battery is mounted on the rear of the crankcase. Ignition is obtained by a coil on the left cylinder block and a distributor unit mounted in front of the engine and driven direct from the engine camshaft. Spark timing is automatically advanced or retarded according to the speed of the engine. A filter unit in conjunction with suppressors on the sparking plug leads prevents electrical interference with wireless transmission and reception. An oil bath air cleaner fixed on the underside of the engine cover filters all air supplied to the Solex carburetor. This carburetor is a dust-proof, non-spillable type, specially designed for this class of vehicle. Mounted on top of the engine at the front and driven by twin V-belts from the crankshaft 
is the six volt dynamo on the front of which and driven by the same belts is an extension carrying the radiator fan. On the top of the dynamo is mounted the voltage regulator which governs the supply of current from the dynamo to the battery. The fuel is drawn from two 10 gallon tanks located one on each side of the engine at the rear. Either tank or both may be used through a two-way cock mounted on the clutch housing. The petrol is fed to the carburetor by a pump which is situated on the intake manifold and is mechanically operated from the camshaft. Normal oil pressure is approximately 40 pounds per square inch which is maintained by a gear type oil pump in the engine sump. Oil cooling is provided for by a finned coil placed in front of the radiator block. A regulator in this system cuts out the cooler until the oil is warm. Built into the back of the division plate behind the seats is the air duct. The engine cooling system consists of a radiator, fan and water pumps. The radiator is of the flat tube type and water is circulated around the cylinder block and heads by thermosiphon action assisted by two water pumps, one on each bank of cylinders. A pressure relief valve is built into the radiator filler neck which is set to blow off at 10 pounds pressure. Using this blow off valve results in a higher boiling point of the water thereby reducing the possibility of boiling in hot climates. The gearbox which is of the crash type is operated from the gear change gate by a remote control. The drive from the gearbox to the back axle is by means of a universal coupling which is contained in a housing bolted to the gearbox and back axle. The rear axle is a commercial vehicle type modified to take sprockets instead of road wheels. The driving sprockets are bolted to the brake drums in which the brake shoes operate. On each side at the front are mounted the rubber tired track adjusting wheels. The whole weight of the vehicle is carried on four sprung bogey assemblies, two on each side. The forward assembly consists of two rubber tired wheels carried in forked steel brackets and embodies two spring assemblies. It is mounted on and is free to oscillate about the hull cross tube. The main fork also carries a rubber tired track guide roller. The rear bogey has only one wheel which is carried in a secondary fork controlled by spring assemblies similar to that on the forward bogey and is mounted in a steel bracket which is bolted to the hull. The carrier is driven by two hinged steel tracks, one on each side, built up by a series of links which form an endless chain. These links are made with two lugs on the inside which provide the means of centering the track on the bogey wheels, guide rollers and track adjusting wheels. The links in the track are ridged across their width and enable it to grip the ground. They also mesh with the teeth on the sprocket wheel which forms the drive for the vehicle. In general design, the carrier is simple and compact, facts which explain the ease with which it can be effectively maintained in the field. Its great versatility and reliability have earned it a reputation second to none among the vehicles of the British Army.